Hello everyone, my name is Alisa with 8Es, and today I'll be casting another 1v1 on the map Lost Temple. We have Shox playing as the Red Zerg in the 7 o'clock position. His opponent is Muzmoro. Muzmoro is a very famous player, and he will be playing as the Blue Terran in the 2 o'clock position. And at first I didn't think that this was actually the real Muzmoro, uh, but his identifier matched with his account on the European servers and I took a look at his match history and he's played some very famous players like Phoenix, uh, AJTLS, and Moose Straylock. so I'm fairly convinced this is a Moose Moro and Moro likes to have his uh, command center at 1 which I've noticed that this Moose Moro does as well so pretty sure that is the Moose Moro. Anyway he's going to be building his barracks here and that is going to be a little bit of a tech hiding if a uh, Zerg player does immediately come in and scout in his base. You might think there is an imminent cheese. And so Shock's right now going to be moving out his overload. And in the beginning, actually, uh, if you guys saw, um, Muzmor actually asked Shock's what race he was. And this is because Shock's actually plays random. So uh, Shock's doing the courteous thing, and actually telling him his race, and this may have dictated the strategy that Muzmoro did decide to play against Shox. And if you guys didn't know, Shox is the creator of the uh, StarCraft II guide that I use as my replay hider. And so he's a very, very nice guy, a very good StarCraft player, as you can, as you will see in this replay. Anyway, Shock's getting a 14 gas, building one more uh, drone, and then getting a 14 pool. Very common and almost standard on all high-level Zerg player, just because of the importance of speedlings early on. Muzmoro going to be moving in f with his early SCV, and he does manage to confirm that it is a Zerg player he's playing against, and he does have a uh, SCV just doing a little bit of scouting. And right now, that barracks he built here, he actually floated it down here, and this is going to do two things. First, it's going to convince Shox that even if he did scout a drone in his base, he's going to be expecting some kind of non-reaper cheese, as indicated by the no gas. But secondly, moving it down here is just going to make it impossible for the drone to actually tell, unless he... Because most players actually just move along the edge instead of, or move near the edge instead of exactly along the edge, and this is just going to hide his barracks a little bit from the from shocks, and that make him that might actually make him panic and scatter on for his own base or expect reapers. And so Moosemore actually going to be building two barrack or two bunkers at the uh, at the base of the ramp and shock space, getting out a very early marine. I think it was a nine racks, nine or ten racks, and pumping out marines straight from there. And at this point, he's going to be trying to go for a little contain on Shox. Immediately after seeing this, however, Shox will be getting his own Roachworn. So this Roachworn is definitely going to do some good against these uh, bunkered-in Marines. And Speedlings are definitely not the right choice. I'm not sure if that is a full wall-off. Uh, I think it actually is a full wall-off. Could be wrong. Yeah, it's definitely a full wall-off just because uh, Muzmore actually d had to... Lotus STV in the bunker, otherwise he would just walk it through. So he's actually building a second row, he, or he's going to be building a second row of a auxiliary barracks is here, and this is because um, I think he's done this build quite a few times and he knows that a lot of Zerg players just like to build push up with creep tumors and uh, spine crawlers and just slowly pick away at his, at these bunkers without uh, the Zerg player actually losing any units. So he he wants to maintain his contain and so he's going to be building a second row of bunkers in the back and this is going to allow him to maintain the contain and right when uh, right when these bunkers start get poked at by the spine crawlers he can just simply salvage, salvage them and get his money back. Right now Shock's fitting building, sorry, a second hatchery in his own base, and this is called the Auxiliary Hatchery, and this is what, uh, in my opinion, all Zerg players should do when they are contained to one base, because getting, um, having a single hatchery and while contained is definitely not a way to be able to spend all your minerals efficiently once you have full saturation because of the low amount of larvae that one hatchery and, uh, and one queen can provide from from the larvae. So he actually took all his guys off gas at this point, and Muzmoro throwing down a scan, seeing the seeing the second hatchery for sure. So he knows he's going to be expecting some of the zerglings. He actually sees that there is actually no drones in the gas right now. So it's definitely zerglings should be expected. And as we can see, Shox is getting the speed upgrade for his zerglings. And so more right now having three auxiliary barracks or bunkers in the back and the thing about bunkers is that if you can put one marine or four marines in and it's really difficult to tell how many are in there so th um, Shock's definitely not wanting to test the waters and seeing because uh, he could definitely run into the possibility of running into 12 marines or just three marines so he definitely does not want to risk his initial roaches to actually try to kill against that or defend against that sorry and uh, taking a look at Shox's base he is spreading the creep, and so he will be using the spine crawler to move up with uh, 
in, within his own base and slowly pick away at any bunkers that actually get too close to the edge. Moro scouting out with his factory, and this is a very, very safe because um, there's, besides the queen, I mean, there's no anti air early game from the Zerg player. And so, Shock's actually getting Lair Tech on his uh, second hatchery, and this is just going to allow him to get Mutalisks if Moro does not scout effectively. And it does look like he is rallying his factory to the uh, to the second hatchery, so he will be getting Lair Tech. And Shock's right now rallying all his Zerglings to the corner, and this is just going to hide his tech. He is further hiding, further, <laughs> furthering hiding his tech from Muzmora, and right now he's going to be moving in with those Zerglings, running straight past those bunkers, and he's just going straight for a Moro's base. Moro has nothing at his base right now. He has two barracks that are almost complete, putting down three bunkers and one more barracks, but those Zerglings get in just in time, right before the bunker goes down, or right before the barracks goes down, sorry, and these Zerglings are in Moro's base right now. Moro does decide to run up into uh, into Shox's base, salvaging all his bunkers, but it is too little too late. These Zerglings will be able to destroy the entire mirror line of, uh, of Moro if Micro properly and uh and shocks had roaches building in his own base to defend against these incoming marines so the close positions on the two players in this game really dictated how the pace of this game was going to proceed moro initially saw that the uh, shocks was a zerg player and he was in the closest spawning position to him and so he proceeded with a double uh bunker contained followed by an auxiliary row of bunkers and this was uh, this was only achieved because of the close rush distances. Perhaps a few more drones and a cross position would have co prevented this completely. But conversely, Moro was bitten, so to speak, bitten in the ass uh, because of the close rush distances uh, for the ability to shocks actually to get a counterattack. I'm sure one or two more seconds would have allowed Moro to put down a second barracks, although shocks did have a large number of speed links and roaches at Portrait. So my name is Alisa with eight E's and I'll see you guys later.